as Chris said, my name is Nancy Corser, and I work at Cornerstone Retirement Partners. For anybody that might have recognized the name, we also have gone by the name Ron Corser and Associates. And within the last 12 months, we actually came back to our original name. So if you happen to hear Ron Corser and Associates and Cornerstone Retirement Partners, we're all still one and the same. And our organization works primarily with people that are getting ready to retire. And my background is that in which when I started about 17 years ago, my husband is the founder, his name is Ron Corser, that it became very clear that people were looking for help with Medicare. It was very overwhelming. They were 63, 64 years old, and they really just didn't know what next step to take. So it became kind of a, a natural progression into beginning to help people. I do consider myself an expert with Medicare, and I have developed contacts and relationships over this period of time at Social Security, because it's Social Security that does the enrollment for Medicare initially when you come aboard, and they are also the people that collect your Part B premium, because Medicare is not free. Everybody pays something for their supplemental, and that's what we're gonna talk about today, although there are some zero premium plans that we're gonna emphasize. But in general, everybody does pay for Medicare Part B. So the purpose of this afternoon is really to give you an overview of what you can and cannot do during this period of time. We call it the annual election period. Many people also call it the open enrollment period. Technically, they are two different things. And actually, if you were to ask somebody in the government that represents Medicare, they would tell you that we are about to enter the annual election period. And sometimes they refer to the acronym of AEP. So today's topic will be strictly educational. We will not talk about any plan specifics. Those plan specifics will become available after October 1st. That's when all the plan information will be announced. And this is for your Part C, which is an Advantage plan, as well as your Part D, which is your drug prescription plan. In addition, people are receiving in the mail the new 2023 Medicare and You book. So be on the lookout for it. I do not have mine yet. But what I would tell you is in the very back of your book is you will see a list of all the plans that are referred to as Advantage plans as well as those that are prescription drug plans. So it is a handy dandy tool. The tricky part of using that, especially in the last couple of pages there, is often people don't know what region they are in. So that's where we can certainly help you. But the book is definitely a good resource in terms of Medicare, what's included in Part A, B, C, and D, and so on. But without further ado, we're going to continue here. So this is, okay, and it doesn't move. Well, we've got to figure out why the slide is not going. Okay, so here's this. And <laughs> I love Zoom. There we go. Thank you for your patience there. All we can do is smile when things like that happen. So it used to be for many years when I first got started, it was just me. And no longer is that the case. Our business has been blessed and we have continued to grow over this period of time. So know that we do have a group of folks in addition to myself that are here to help you every step of the way. So we've got myself on the very far left there. And then in the middle is Kristen. And Kristen joined the organization about a year and a half ago and she is doing the same thing that I do. So she is helping people when they first turn 65 and will be a real instrumental resource during open enrollment as she'll be meeting with people who want to review their plans because that's the real emphasis is make sure you don't leave your plan in autopilot, that you wanna make sure that you review the changes that are gonna be impacted for next year. Next to Kristen is Amy and Amy is the newest member of the team. She's in charge of all the back office stuff keeping things organized, coordinated, helping with the appointment side of things. 
And next year, Amy will become licensed as well, because it is important that my team does know the ins and outs of what you can do with Medicare. Medicare is a highly regulated business. They very much want to make sure that people that are eligible are not taken advantage of. In fact, we're going to talk a little bit about that later when we think about the ads that we all see on TV. So everybody needs to know what the ground rules are. So myself, Kristen, and eventually Amy will all have their licenses. My sister Sherry is to the far right. She's been with us probably for the last six or seven years and also does a lot of administrative type of work and works on a part-time basis for us. So what's most important is that you understand it starts on October 15th. Again, the plan information with that Medicare and You book is available on the 1st of October. And if you get your book in the next couple of days, you're actually going to have insight as to what it looks like. And you probably will know more than what I do. Because even though I just went through all my training this past month, most of the insurance companies do not tell us as an agent what the final numbers actually look like. It will run through December the 7th, which is about a seven week period of time. So this is a period of time where if you want to make a change, it will most likely involve a paperwork change and it has to be into Medicare or into the carrier no later than the 7th. So on October 1st, not only is the book a resource, but also know that you can go to medicare.gov. It's a great website. If you were to go out there on October 1st, and I literally get up at 12.01 on October 1st to see if the information is available. It will show the plans for 2022, and it will show the plans for 2023. So that's how we begin to know what's going on and start to be able to help people because there are a lot of plans to pick from. There's a lot of carriers to pick from and they're not all necessarily the same. And that again is the importance that we're making here, which is the worst thing you could do would be to do nothing and then to find out that your plan isn't gonna work well next year. It's more expensive than what you thought it was going to be. It doesn't cover the same things, that the co-pays are different, so on and so forth. So we'll talk a little bit more about what to look for there. All the plan changes that occur during this time will become effective on January 1st of next year. So during this time, as I've just mentioned, we can't stress enough the point that you need to do something. And the carriers that you are with today, they could be Priority Health, they could be Blue Cross, it could be WellCare, could be United Healthcare, the list goes on and on and on. They will all be responsible for putting in your hands a written in the paper documentation referred to as the annual notice of change. It has an acronym of ANOC. So if somebody was to say, do you have your ANOC? You're going to know what it is because it is a multi-page document that's going to explain to you that the premium went from X to Y. It would probably also talk about if there were any kind of changes to deductibles, maybe even eliminations of certain medications. They try to do a good job of summarizing the key points that you need to know coming into the new year. We have many clients here again, having done this for the last 17 years. And I would probably tell you that about 20% of the clients that we have do indeed make plan changes. So hopefully the other 80% have taken the time to look at the annual notice of change or to have just placed a quick phone call here to us, asked a question, and then they were able to make a decision. If you decide that your plan is perfectly acceptable for next year, you do not need to do anything. Your plan will automatically renew and you will indeed be enrolled in the very same plan, very same name with whatever the new changes will be, which will be effective the first of the upcoming year. So here's just a little brief recap of what the parts are. We have part A, which is all the hospitalization. And one of the reasons that you decided to add on with additional insurance is you didn't want the exposure associated with what is a great big deductible for Part A. So every year the government comes out with brand new numbers 
and it refers to what we call original Medicare. Original Medicare started back in 1965, and it always started right from the get-go with parts A and B. It's been C and D that have been added after the fact. So part A has always been the hospitalization. This year, the annual, this year, the deductible, and it's based on a 60-day period of time, is $1,556. So from what I can tell from the poll, everyone has some type of additional insurance, which is going to help you offset that $1,556. So good job. Because if you do not have any additional insurance and you were admitted to the hospital, and I have seen this where someone didn't know that there was other insurance that they could add to Medicare, they do become responsible for that, whether they're there one day or they're there 59 days because it is based on a 60-day period of time. Part A is also set up where if you're in the hospital longer than the 60 days, then we have co-pays and it gets just more expensive and more expensive. Now, Part B, in general, you will hear on the TV and read that Medicare pays 80% and you will pay approximately 20%. So again, what we have here is if you were to go to a doctor, and they charge $300, you would be paying 20% if all you had was original Medicare Part A and Part B. But again, many of you have elected to add on more insurance. So your plan and the beauty of your plan is it takes that 20% that you otherwise were responsible for and it will convert it to a copay. Or in some cases, it might pick up the entire 20%. So in a moment, you're gonna see that there are one of two options that you have eligibility for as it pertains to adding more to original Medicare. So part A and part B is original Medicare. Most people become eligible for it when they turn 65. If they continue to work for a period of time, they may have delayed their enrollment in Medicare and that's fine. There are some guidelines that people do need to follow. And then they sign up for Medicare and they're off and running and they too have both parts A and part B. So part C, part C has been around for about 10 years. It is referred to as a Medicare Advantage plan. It is becoming increasingly popular. And basically what it does is it replaces part A and part B and it becomes something brand new. So you'll hear more about that in a moment. Part D, the prescription drug plan. This was introduced in 2006 because there had been no provision for helping seniors with their medications. So unfortunately, it's a little bit of a convoluted plan. You'll see that in a few minutes here. And again, we're really stressing at this point, the review of your Part C and your Part D plan. That's really what's up for grabs here in terms of Medicare's annual election period, which starts the 15th of October. If you were here in the office, and some of you in the past I know have come to see us, we do have a diagram that looks exactly like what you're looking at. Because what's important is that you first understand Part A and B, and we have briefly touched upon that and then talk about what those options are for additional insurance. So we often refer to the left side as the person that decided to add three cards in their wallet. They carry a red, white, and blue card, which is their Medicare card. They have a Part B premium that they pay. This year it is $170.10 a month. If they are on or you are on Social Security, they automatically deduct it from your retirement check. And if you are not on Social Security and you're paying $170.10 a month, they will send you a quarterly bill. The quarterly bill will allow you to charge it to a credit card. You can set it up to have it deducted from a savings or a checking account. Or you can pay the quarterly bill. But until you're on Social Security, you do get a bill. There's no way that you escape the Part B. And again, this is Medicare that we're talking about today and not Medicaid. Medicaid, if you thought Medicare was complicated, Medicaid is right up there. 
And there are agencies in Kent County and elsewhere that help people with the Medicaid side in terms of, of understanding what you can and cannot do. Part D, this individual would be adding a separate standalone drug plan. It appears from the poll that we don't have anyone that has a separate drug plan. But if you have a friend or a family member and they pulled out a card and it was separate and they paid a premium and they didn't have medical insurance built into the card, like the Advantage plan person does, you know that they're on the left side of the diagram. So the prescription drug plans, they have a premium, they have an annual deductible, and they have co-pays and or co-insurance. All the plans are designed to cover all the possible medical needs that an individual might have. So although the premiums vary from $7.50 right on up to 100, a person that has a new medical need won't have a problem being able to use their existing plan because the formularies are huge. So they treat all medical conditions. A person that has diabetes, they have cancer, they have vertigo, they have high blood pressure, et cetera, et cetera. So they're very expansive. And there are many plans to pick from here. And this is where we will help you if you do have a standalone drug plan or you do have a Medicare Advantage plan that you want reviewed and have a better understanding of how it's gonna work and what's most cost effective. So that's where we get involved. I failed to tell you, we do get paid for our services. So often that is a question. And the insurance companies that we represent, that represent the Part C and the Part D is who pays our salary or our commissions, if you will. Also, years ago, the government, Medicare, leveled the playing field for how much every Medicare agent or advisor receives. So there is no way that someone, and this happened in the past, someone might have represented one plan and made more money and then flipped them over to another plan and might have made even greater commissions. So the government said, no, everybody's going to make the same amount. And every year they do revise that number. Staying on the left-hand side, completing this particular person's method, if you will, of Medicare planning and how they were going to pay their bills for drugs and medical expenses is the person that has what's called a Medicare supplement. It also goes by way of the name Medigap policy. These plans are not parts, but they are a plan and they have a letter. And here's where it starts to get confusing again. Because today, what's popular with a Medigap policy, if you knew someone that had a policy like this, is they have a plan letter on their card, which most likely reads F as in Frank, G as in Go, N as in Nancy, and there's even a couple of other plan letters, okay? This individual has a premium that increases every year. It's based on cost of living and their age, so it always goes up. And we all know that the cost of living continues as well as the rising cost of health care. So they may start at $100 when they first turn 65, but every year after it is going to be going up. Now, the beauty of the Medigap policy is they are paying more in premium for virtually no out of pocket. So the Advantage plan where it differs from the Medigap plan is it's chocked full of copays. So it may not be a lot, but every medical service or need is going to have a copay. So we're going to talk in more detail about that. But the big difference is going to be if I have a Medigap supplement, I can go anywhere in the United States. I don't have to have a medical emergency or an urgent care need to be able to go see a dermatologist in Arizona or a heart doctor in Florida, my plan travels right with me. I pay more in a premium. It will go up every year, but I virtually have no out of pocket. So I've elected to pay more up front and have virtually no out of pocket. So some people like it for peace of mind, other people will say, I like just knowing what I'm going to be paying for the year and I don't have any surprises. 
maybe I do need an MRI or I need some physical therapy where I'm going to have to go numerous times. The person on the left-hand side is not thinking about what is the cost of my copay? What is the cost of my copay? Nor are they thinking about, is my doctor in the network? Are they a PPO doctor, an HMO doctor, an LMNOP doctor? As long as the doctor, medical facility, test result, where you get your blood drawn, you name it, as long as they take Medicare, they will take the Medigap supplement. So that's the left side. On the right side, it's becoming increasingly popular because it is also a plan that years ago didn't allow for a lot of travel, and it definitely does today. So if you have a medical emergency or an urgent care need, it always was going to cover you at the copay. Most of the emergency room visits for a Medicare Advantage plan are $90, and it's $90 anywhere in the world. Most of the urgent care visits range anywhere from $30 to $50 a visit. It's going to work anywhere in the world. And now more than ever, plans are also letting you know that if you do spend time in Florida, Arizona, California, anywhere in the 50 United States, if you did need to see that heart doctor that I referenced earlier, you would have the same copay as the specialist in Kent County. Those range generally anywhere from $35 to $45. So they're making more provisions for people to travel and to be able to spend time outside of the state of Michigan as a snowbird, if you will. The beauty of the Medicare Advantage plan is also you only have one card. Generally, the first time you go see the doctor, if you're new to Medicare or you have a new doctor, they generally do want to see your red, white, and blue card because your Medicare ID number is unique to you. And that's the number they want to be able to put in their system. But once they've got you all logged in and ready to go, you really only need to use your card from a carrier like Priority Health, Blue Cross, Humana, WellCare, HAP. Again, the list goes on. There's probably about 40 different possibilities in terms of a plan. And there's probably about seven or eight different insurance companies that represent those plans. They often have a low plan, medium plan, and, and a high plan, if you will. They also include the prescription drug coverage. So you don't have to go out and buy a separate drug plan. It's built right into the plan. So it makes it nice for people that either don't take any medications or perhaps they have only a tier one medication, which is a pretty inexpensive medication. And some people don't even pay anything for their medications because they have found other resources at the pharmacies where they will offer up the medication at no cost. So having a Part B built into the plan, whether or not the person uses it or not, doesn't matter. But the government says you do have credible drug coverage. Therefore, there is no penalty. So I make the point here because once in a while, I'll have somebody who says, I don't take any medications. I'm not signing up for the left side. I'm going to skip that Part D altogether. I don't need that plan. Or they don't understand that on the right-hand side with the Medicare Advantage plan, that even though they didn't need it, the good news is it's built into their plan. So they are given consideration for that by the federal government. So you've got one-stop shopping with the Medicare Advantage plan for all your drug needs. You're still going to have co-pays. You still could have coinsurance as it pertains to the medication, dependent upon what you have as far as the type of medication, brand versus generic. But what it also offers that Medicare does not is it offers preventative services like dental, vision, and hearing. And that's a really nice feature because many people that come aboard when they were working on the group plan, they had dental, vision, and hearing, or they certainly had dental and vision. So when they move to Medicare, they're like, oh, wow, I still want my dental and vision. So it will be embedded in the plan. The vast majority of those almost 40 plans do indeed have that provision. Most of the plans have two visits to the dentist, and then they have bite wing x-rays, which often cost you nothing. They also have a vision provision, which in most cases is a visit to the eye doctor, the ophthalmologist, the optometrist and you get an eyewear credit. 
Now, what becomes increasingly important with a Medicare Advantage plan is everything is done with a network. So it's very important that you know that if you are working with a plan that participates with Delta Dental, as an example, you must have a Delta Dental dentist. Otherwise, you are not going to get the full benefit of the plan. If you have eye needs, vision needs, most of the plans participate either with iMed or with VSP. Those are the two big carriers in terms of the network. So it's important, again, to take full advantage of your plan to know that I'm working within a network. I want to go see an eye doctor. Do they participate? I want to go see a hearing audiologist specialist. Are they working within a network? So same thing with the doctors. I've got a specialist. Do they work within the network? My audiologist, my optometrist, my op you name it, you've got to be thinking about that. Chiropractor, acupuncturist where you might get some lab work done. Everything is done within a network. And the reason for that is that's how they're able to keep the cost down. This is managed care. So by managing that care, if you will, confining it to a network so that we're not just out kind of doing our own thing. They've got contracts with all these doctors and specialists and so on. They're able to keep the cost down. And when I say cost down, more than ever before, we're starting to see the zero premium plan. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But know that there are still plans out there that do have premiums. And in general, although it's changing a little bit, the more you pay in a premium, the less you will have in out-of-pocket costs and the lower your maximum out-of-pocket will consist of. So we'll drill into that a little bit in more detail. But you do need to be thinking about a network. Always have somebody verify for you or call the doctor, the practice itself, and make sure that the plan that you are in or you want to consider does indeed participate. As a side note, I have a few folks that do a lot with more of the homeopathic kind of care. It isn't that you can't go see someone that, that offers those kinds of services. The key is whether or not Medicare says it's a service that they will cover. So if they do cover the service, but the doctor doesn't participate, you can still file a claim and be reimbursed, but you're stuck with the paperwork. So when a doctor participates or the office participates, they're the ones that are interacting with Medicare, with the codes and so on and so forth. Otherwise you're kind of on your own if you have somebody who does not participate. But again, if it's a covered Medicare service, you will be reimbursed. You're just going to have to go spend a little extra time trying to figure it out. So during this period of time, here's what you can do. If you have a prescription drug plan, you might have only part A and part B. You might also have that Medigap that we just showed you and a part D. This is the time of the year for people to look at making that change. Second bullet point, it's the time of the year to evaluate your Medicare Advantage plan. Always start with the doctors. Some people tell us it doesn't matter, Nance. I'm happy to go to another doctor if it means I can save money for whatever reason. Let us know those types of things because doctors do choose which plans they want to participate in. Change from a Medicare Advantage plan to a Medigap in Part D. Once in a while, we'll have somebody that has the Medicare Advantage plan. There is no medical underwriting for the Medicare Advantage plan. Years ago, there were some restrictions on who could get in and who could not. Those have been lifted. So no matter what your medical condition or medical history, as long as you enroll in the Medicare Advantage plan during the right time of the year or make a change during the annual election period, you are free to make that change. Here's something that I, I forgot to mention and it's important. And that's this, if a person has an Advantage plan and wants to move to a Medigap, so they've said, you know what, we're willing to pay more in a premium. We don't want a lot of out-of-pocket. We like the idea of being able to pick our own doctor. They do have to medically qualify because only the very first time when you turn 65 or when you first became eligible and dropped your group coverage, do you get what's called guarantee issue. Everybody gets one time one freebie 
where they cannot ask you medical questions, there are no pre-existing conditions that count against you. So this particular option when exercised generally is exercised in October fairly soon because it will go to a medical underwriter. It will go to an insurance company that represents these Medigap plans. And there are a series of questions that you answer in advance on a paper form. Then they will call you and they will say, okay, tell me about this medication that you take. How long have you been taking it? I see that you checked this box, yes. Tell me a little bit more about your time in the hospital or whatever the case may be. So you are either approved or you are declined. There's nothing in between, either you're in or you're not in. But in the meantime, your Medicare Advantage plan cannot be canceled until the end of the year. So by applying early in October, it gives the medical underwriting folks time to make their phone call, time to fill out the paperwork, get back with you as to whether or not you've been approved or not. You always have this fallback position, the Medicare Advantage plan, but you might not always be able to get into a Medigap. The last bullet point here, we had about 40 people last year that exercised this particular change. And what they said was, we want to move from a Medigap. We like the fact that we don't have any out-of-pocket expense, that we can go to any doctor, we can travel anywhere in the United States, but you know what? We just don't need a plan where we have a premium every month of a hundred and some dollars to pay. So they really have opted to take their Medigap premium of a hundred and some dollars, and again, it varies based on your age. I mean, when you start pushing into age 80, it's probably into the $200 a month range, okay? But what they elected to do is they said, we will pay as we go, because that's the concept of the Medicare Advantage plan. They said, I'm gonna take my $100, or let's just use 200. I'm gonna take my $200 a month that I would pay with a Medigap, multiply times 12, because I'm on the hook for it every month, I've taken my $2,400 and I'm going to see what happens with the Medicare Advantage plan. As I said before, many people are moving to a zero premium plan. So you've got $2,400 to play with, with my example here. You go to the doctor. Most of the primary care doctors are zero. You go to the specialist, it's 45. So what I often recommend people do is look at last year. What kind of doctor bills did you have? Where did you go? Were you in the hospital? Did you have physical therapy? So on and so forth. And do a little bit of a guesstimate because it might be by the time you do the what ifs that you'll say, you know what? Instead of, pen, instead of spending $2,400 on the Medigap, it looks like I might only spend $1,200 if I have the same kind of year as what I had before. So those are all things that we, we guide you with. We ask you lots of questions. I met with somebody this morning. He did wanted to do exactly what we're doing here with the Medigap and potential movement to the Advantage plan. And he said, no, I'm very comfortable staying right where I'm at. I have the money to pay the Medigap and it just gives me more peace of mind in knowing that I don't have that out-of-pocket expense. He also knew that he didn't have dental vision and hearing. It is a nice feature on the Medicare Advantage plan. There's no doubt about that. So we touched upon a little bit of this, but it's all in one, one-stop shopping. Plan C is what it's referred to as. Actually, it's a part. So it's not a plan. It should have been a part. I need to fix that. It combines part A and B and D, the drug plan. The benefits and cost sharing vary dependent upon how much you pay in a premium. You still have to pay the Part B premium. The base premium is $170.10. If your income is more than $182,000 and you file jointly, you do pay more. And if you're a single person and your income is more than $91,000, you also pay more. And remember, the government always looks two years back in assigning your premium for the current year. So this year in 2020, I'm sorry, this year in 2022, they looked at the 2020 income tax. So they have access to your IRS tax record. Every Advantage plan has a safeguard. It's called the maximum out of pocket. They keep track of it for you. They generally send you a quarterly statement and you know exactly where you are. 
the average maximum out of pocket is probably in the neighborhood of about $5,300 per person per year. And everything starts January and goes through the end of the year. The maximum out of pocket does not include medications and it does not include any kind of additional services rendered for dental, vision, hearing, over the counter. Those are all outside of what they count as the maximum out of pocket. It's strictly the medical side. So again, refresher and reminder, make sure that all those doctors and hospitals and labs participate in a network. If you have an out-of-network condition, it's possible you're going to pay more, not always, but understand that you have an in and an out-of-network condition. You do have worldwide coverage for any kind of emergency and urgent care. And the nice feature certainly is that you have the added benefits. Now, everybody does get preventative services under Part B. Those are things like your vaccination for the flu shot, uh, mammograms, colonoscopy, so on and so forth. Those are still covered benefits. It doesn't matter whether you have the left side or you have the right side of the diagram. You just need to make sure that you follow the guidelines in terms of every 10 years for this or every year for that or the bone density this. You just need to understand what the, the guidelines of the timeline are, is. So what's new for Part C for next year? You're gonna see more and more of those zero month premium plans. With the exception of the primary care doctor, everything has something in the way of a copay. It might only be $10, or it might be something more than that. And again, you want to kind of anticipate what your needs might be for the year. There are a few plans this year, and there'll be more next year, I say after October 1st, that will have what we call the Part B give back. So there were a few plans this year that gave $100 back of the 170 10 So that person only paid $70.10. And there were a few that gave $30 back. So again, it was a subtraction from the 170 10 base premium. More plans are going to offer transportation benefits. So if a person's living alone or they don't drive anymore, it might be they need a doctor's appointment. They're going to be able to arrange for transportation. There are increased over-the-counter dollar amounts that are going to be extended. So in the past, you might have had $50 every quarter to spend. You may get more this year, okay? There are even a few plans that said it's not a use it or lose it, that you actually could carry over from quarter to quarter those dollars that you might not have spent in the prior quarter. What you get for the over-the-counter is based on how the plan designs the catalog. So Band-Aids, vitamins, aspirin, Pepto-Bismol, you name it. There's hundreds of items you, get, items you get to pick from. They all have a dollar value associated with them. You can either go into the store, like a CVS, a Walmart, Walgreens, wherever they're set up. Many plans will allow you to call a 1-800 number, place your order, the order over the phone, or even go online, check the boxes as to what products you want to receive for your quarter allowance. Often it is a debit card that they will load those values on your card and then you just swipe them across or, or they calculate it based on you calling in or ordering online. There will be more plans also that are gonna have a zero copay for their tier one medications. And tier one tend to be the generic medications or preferred generic. We're gonna switch now to the standalone prescription drug plan. So again, the Advantage plan, 99% of them have the Part D built in. Those that have a Medigap should be having a standalone plan that they look at evaluating every year. Those plans do have annual deductibles. This year, it's $480. So if a person has a very expensive medication, it's based on the retail price of that medication. Not all plans charge the annual deductible on tier one or tier two. Most plans charge it on tier three. So an example of a tier three drug is Eliquis. If somebody had a standalone plan and they had Eliquis, they're going to pay the first $480 towards their purchase of Eliquis the very first month they go in. After that, they will have co-pays and they will have co-insurance. 
on the part or on the option two or option one, left side, right side, you still have what's referred to as a preferred or standard pharmacy condition. So always make sure that you know with your plan, where are those preferred pharmacies? Because they're not universal. One plan may have a Walgreens as preferred and the other plan says, nope, Walgreens is not preferred on my plan. So you always want to know where is it that I can go? And if I do travel, you're not going to want Meyer because Meyer isn't nationwide. You're going to want to make sure that you could go to a Walgreens or go to a Walmart where you have nationwide type of coverage. There are a few pharmacies that are more mom and pop types of pharmacies, and they do not have coverage that gives you any kind of copay or coinsurance discount. So the bad news on those is you are going to pay the full retail price. So make sure that you know, I have a preferred pharmacy. I'm getting the greatest value. Standard pharmacies will still work. You might pay a little bit more, but stay away from the not covered pharmacy. Again, these are things that we help people understand and uncover. If you do mail order, there are plans that will give you a zero copay for tier one and tier two. Also keep in mind that a tier one on one plan for a specific medication may not be a tier one on another plan. So just because the Torvastatin was a tier one on plan A, it may not be a tier one on plan B. So don't make assumptions in terms of where everybody puts the medications. Here's the Part D drug model. Not gonna spend a lot of time on it right now. If there is anybody that has found themselves paying more in the donut hole, we can certainly talk through that in more detail. But in general, the Part D drug model rolled out in 2006, it is very convoluted. And if you have a lot of medications, it does behoove you to understand how it works. And again, that's where we can help because there are some other options that we might recommend. It could be, you might consider a Canadian pharmacy. You might consider good RX. You might consider a pharmaceutical program, which is gonna help you manage and maybe minimize some of your costs. So phase one was that deductible. It may or may not apply. This year it was $480. Phase two is where they're collecting all the values for the drugs that you're ordering. They're taking into account your copays. They're taking into account the retail price of that very same drug and copay. If you find that you have spent more than $4,000 in retail cost, and again, they send you a document, and this holds true for the this holds true also for the Medicare Advantage plan. They send you a separate document just with your medications on it. If you find yourself in what's called the coverage gap or the donut hole, you pay 25% of the retail cost. So in my example of the Eliquis, if the Eliquis was a $400 retail cost drug, and my mom has this happen every October, every October her $42 copay in the initial coverage phase goes to 25% of the 400 and now she pays $100. So for October, November, and December, she's on the hook for the $100. Very same drug because she found herself in phase three, otherwise known as the coverage gap. Phase four is what we call the catastrophic phase. Not a lot of people find themselves here but they also offer up a little discounting where the person isn't paying as much. And again, for now, I'm not gonna go through that, but tiers one and two generic or preferred generic, tiers three tend to be brand, one of a kind, don't have a generic equivalent yet, preferred brand, and once in a while we have a tier five specialty. And this is gonna to be to treat something that's probably a little bit more serious in terms of a medical condition. Here are some of the changes that will affect the prescription drug plan, and this will affect it on either the left side or the right side, either option one or option two, so it doesn't matter. The government has put in place, and I don't know if it's all finalized yet, but here's what they're proposing. They're proposing that there be no catastrophic level whatsoever. So they're mapping this out over the years 2023 through 2029. So over the next six years, you are going to see the elimination of that top level called the catastrophic coverage level. 
you're also going to see a maximum expenditure of no more than $2,000 for your annual out-of-pocket expense. You're also going to see they are going to start negotiating with the pharmaceutical companies because they've not had that ability. Who is they? The government. The government is going to take a more active role in working with the pharmaceutical companies saying, look, we need to negotiate the price of the drugs. In fact, in 20. 2026, it's going to be a little while from now, they are going to take the top 10 most expensive drugs, most widely used drugs, and they're going to go back to the pharmaceutical companies and say, okay, we need to talk about how this is going to work because we need to try to manage the cost in a more effective way. In 2028, it's actually going to include some Part B drugs. So know that we've been primarily talking about Part D medications, but there are drugs that are infusion drugs. Example is chemotherapy. You go into an infusion center and you receive the chemotherapy. That is considered a part B drug. It's something where you go into an infusion center uh, and they inject the drug into your veins in the case of the chemotherapy. Um, there are other drugs for osteoporosis where somebody might go in and receive an injection for that as well. That is a Part B drug, not a Part D drug. So we're going to move on from here. Again, we'll answer any questions should there be any, but we want you to know about something that's brand new for us. And we're ramping up because it is a requirement now. It's a brand new marketing rule that's being put into place. And the reason for it is all those ads on TV that have been out there for about the last two years that interrupt your programs like you can't believe. We see Joe Namath, we see Jimmy John, we see William Shatner and who knows whoever or else out there. They are enticing you to give them a call because they want you to believe that you may be missing out on some of the benefits that are rightfully yours. Well, as a result of those phone calls, in fact, Amy just had a call from somebody and she said, you know what? I never agreed to make a change. But what happened was the person picked up the phone, they dialed the 1-800 number, they got somebody that's not in the Western Michigan area that knows our market, and they asked them about their zip code, and they ended up getting enrolled in a plan that they never did indeed agree to. So this marketing rule being put into place is gonna require that anytime we talk to somebody on a phone call, that we let them know that it is being recorded. We have to keep it for 10 years and we have to have the ability to play it back. We're also gonna be reading a disclaimer that says we do not offer every plan in the area. And partly that's because the carrier or the insurance company does not have appointments with all carriers. Some carriers you strictly go direct. But if you do decide to meet in person with an agent like us or with anyone else that you might have in place, because hopefully you're reviewing your plan with an expert, is it doesn't apply to the in-person appointment as well. So I kind of got the slides here mixed up, but those TV ads are what has prompted that new marketing rule for us, and that will be put in place on October 1st. And again, the number one complaint that Medicare has voiced has said, people called to say, I never enrolled in this plan. And when they went to see the doctor, the doctor was able to see what plan they had, and they went, wait a minute, that is not the plan that I have in my wallet. That is not the card I should be using. And sure enough, they were automatically unbeknownst to them, but they gave the caller in the call center just enough information where they were able to finalize the enrollment and they ended up in a plan that they didn't even know they were in. A lot of these folks in the call centers, a lot of them do a great job. Some of them don't. It's very important that you verify your doctor so that they are in the network. So we strongly encourage you to work with a local Medicare advisor. We're coming in for a landing. So quick review, the mistakes that you want to avoid. Do not leave your plan in autopilot. Pilot. So even if you decide to stay, at least take a look at your annual notice of change. 
Hopefully by now you have a better understanding of what you can and cannot do during AEP. Maybe you do want to look at your Medicare Advantage plan and consider moving to a Medigap or vice versa. Maybe you do want to consider moving away from carrier A and considering carrier B. A lot of the doctors participate in some of the bigger well-known plans. So I know my mom in the past has experimented. One year she tried X and the next year she tried Y. We ended up coming back to X, but this is the time that you would go about doing it. You are committed for the whole year with your Medicare Advantage plan. The only thing, and I didn't write it here, and I'll, I'll just tell you this, for those of you that do have a Medicare Advantage plan, this is not widely advertised. And that is, there is one more window of time with which to make a change. And that actually is called open enrollment, but it's only open enrollment for the Medicare Advantage plan. And it starts in January, it goes January, February, and March. So I think last year I got two calls. People said, you know, I never reviewed it during October and November. Shame on me, Nance. But I do know that I have one more time to go back out to the drawing board. So that's what I want to do. So if you sign up in April or January, you get Feb, February, March, March, April. But that's it because then you're looking at open and you're looking at the annual election period later in the fall. So just a difference there. And again, that's January, February, and March. It's called open enrollment for the Advantage plan only. Not considering your out-of-pocket expenses. If you understand enough about how the two variations work, you'll know I either paid more up front and I have virtually no out-of-pocket, or I elected to go with the zero premium. I've got some low co-pays. I like the fact that I'm not spending two or three hundred dollars with the dentist. I'm not spending two or three hundred dollars with the eye doctor, so on and so forth. For people that do have the Medigap, we do have dental and vision plans, but they're all add-on plans. Whereas again, the Advantage plan holder has them available. The Advantage plan holder also has the ability to buy more dental and vision. So keep that in mind. You might have a zero premium, but the carrier might also say, if you want some more dental for another 20 or $30, you can add on. And you would want to do that during the annual election period. Lastly, expecting your health to remain the same. We all know that it, it, it's, it's subject to change. Each one of us are getting older. Uh, we don't have quite the zip and energy that we had in the past. And it's important to recognize that one plan might do just a little better job dependent upon where you are from a health perspective. So the joke here is also, if you do come and see us, we do have a crystal ball and the crystal ball only comes out during the annual election period because sometimes people, it's kind of like, oh, I'm not sure what I should do, you know, but we're going to help you make a good decision. We're gonna walk you through it carefully we're gonna give you plenty of time to be able to make a decision. We're gonna give you written materials that you can go home with, give some thought to, um, come back with questions. One thing about us, we are not pushy. Our goal is to educate you to make sure that you're comfortable with the decision, that you can walk away and say, you know what, I got it, I understand it, I'm good for next year. And then you come back because every one of our clients has an opportunity to revisit and visit what they have. Um, it is our busiest time of the year. All we would say is, you know, have a real active interest in, in coming in and being open-minded to wanting to talk about your plan. If you have an agent, call them. That's what they're being paid for. They are receiving a commission for your business. So they're available. They should be able to help you. But if you don't have an agent and you're really, you know, I looked at my annual notice of change and I'm still not getting it and I'm, I'm worried, give us a call. We will make time for you. The way we will make time for you is with an appointment. You're going to be able to call the office here, either talk with Amy. We also have Taylor. She helps schedule appointments. Again, it's our busy time of the year. We go nonstop. We don't work Sundays, but we're working Monday through Saturday and taking little breaks in between because a lot of people do want to talk about, should I make a change? And if we don't think you need to make a change, we're going to tell you you don't need to make a change. We're not in it to, to make money. Yes, 
we've got lots of clients and we're taking good care of them, but I would never put somebody in a plan that I didn't think was right for them. And if your plan works good for you and we agree on that, you understand it, you're going to stay right where you're at. And you know what, this slide was out of, out of sync here. So I'm sorry about that. Somehow it got switched. So here's just one more thing about the Part D that could apply to somebody. I did talk about the government's ability to negotiate. We also have people that do take insulin products and the government is going to be moving forward that all the insulin products are gonna have a $35 copay. It's not in place yet. There are some, it's called the Senior Savings Drug Model. And there are a few insulins last year, 2021, 2022, that qualify for the 35. But the goal with the government changes that are proposed is that they're going to have a whole bunch of insulins. And then lastly, those vaccines. Um, there are vaccines you pay for. One of them is the shingle shot. So if you haven't had the shingle shot, hopefully in the next year or two, you're going to see that vaccine plus any others that might have a price tag associated with them. It will be no cost to you. So we will review your existing coverage with you. You have to request it. We want you to understand that we want to understand what's most important to you. We're going to ask you a lot of questions. We're going to verify your doctors. We're going to ask you the doctor's name so that we can do the pre-work and make good use of your time and ours when you come in. We're going to do a Part D analysis on your medications. We're going to make sure that you know you're going to a preferred pharmacy. And the recommendations, if you decide to make a move, we're going to do all the paperwork for you. Here's our website. It's nancycourser.com. You're going to be able to communicate through the website. We have a tool that allows you to request a consultation, or you can call us. Here's our phone number, 616. 301-2581. And we have option number two. And we have an email address. You're more than welcome to use that. And courser at cornerstone-rp.com. So that concludes the presentation for this 